All right, good to roll. All right, thanks again for being here and for covering Wake Forest football. We appreciate it. Uh, just to, to recap, uh, Florida State, uh, like I said after the game, I just thought that was a, a great, gritty ACC uh, road team win. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's games that you win and you're relieved, and that game was pure joy. Uh, it was, I think, one of the biggest wins that we've had here, and, and so much of it was because of the circumstances. You know, we just came off a tough loss to Clemson. We're on the road in a very tough environment to play against an undefeated ACC team that we have a lot of respect for, and the uncertainty of the weather. You know, not knowing if we'd be able to get down there and uh, all the communication that was going on with Delta and whether they were going to be able to fly. And, you know, all, you mix all those things together and it's not a, a straightforward week. Um, and then the way the game started, you know, Florida State got the ball and they were up 7 nothing in the blink of an eye. Uh, but just the way our defense responded, never any panic. And then we got some big stops. You know, the offense then scored 28 unanswered points, and they get back in the game then, and they score it and make it a, a seven-point game. And, and that drive of 18 plays and almost seven minutes to make it a two-score game, some of the plays that we made on that drive, uh, the catch by Key and some of Sam's throws and the runs by Christian Turner, uh, there were so many gut-check moments in that game and fortunately, we made those plays. And then even for Matt Dennis to hit that field goal after his first career miss. So here's a redshirt freshman. He has his first taste of failure in a game. And the very next kick with the game on the line, he kicks it right through. Um, and I just thought it was a, a really good character uh, program win uh, for our football team. And so, you know, when those games are over, you don't fly home, you float home. Um, and then we come back here on Sunday, right? And if you're telling them to get over the loss and look ahead, uh, you got to get over the win and get ahead. And so, you know, I think these are the opposite challenges, right? To, to come back and respond and recenter and refocus after a, a heartbreaking loss. And now you got to do the same thing after an emotional win. And that's what's so great about college football, that there's, there's both responses. And they're both challenging. And, and now uh, we have to refocus against a, 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 really, uh, a really good Army team. Um, it's a, a program that I have a lot of respect for. Uh, Jeff Munkin and I worked together at the University of Buffalo back in 1992. I've known him for 30 years. And, and the program that he's built at Army is incredible. I mean, they struggled for years and years and years. And if you just look at, you know, the last, the previous five seasons, there's an 11 win, a 10 win, and two nine win seasons. And uh, I'm sure they're not off to the start that they want, but this is a program um, that is used to winning and the players are used to winning. And the, the nature of uh, the character of the student athletes that they recruit there, um, it, it's, you know, these are guys that are extremely resilient football players. And, you know, I just went and, and watched last year's game, and I, my heart started beating again. That was one of the most torturous games I've ever been through. You know, we just we couldn't get a stop. And, uh, you know, if Trey Red doesn't make that pick six on the fake field goal and the guy was wide open, uh, you know, that thing probably comes down to a two-point play. And uh, every game we've played with them has been like that. You know, it was a, a three-point win in, in 14, a last-second field goal in 15. They beat us by eight in 16. And then last year's game was a, a barn burner. Um, and we're their one power five game. And they're going to come here ready to play. And uh, it's going to be a sellout crowd. We're excited about that. That's our third sellout in a row. and our fifth sellout in the last six games. And we're really proud and appreciative of the type of fan support we're now getting. I remember when I first got here in 14, uh, you know, the players, you know, geez, we don't get good crowds at home game. The students don't come. 
And the message was, you know, why don't we put a product on the field we're supporting and let's see what happens. And I think we've done that and the students and our fans uh, have responded and we're grateful for the support we're getting. Uh, on offense, again, this is still a very good football team. They're averaging over 32 points a game, 300 yards a game on the ground. They got a really two really good quarterbacks. Uh, the slot Robinson is a, a very dynamic player. I mean, he went up and down the field against us a year ago. Uh, their tight end might be the best blocking tight end that we'll face all season. Um, and they've got a really good O-line, and, and these guys know what they're doing. Uh, on defense, they've got some really good players as well. Uh, you know, the safety Broughton, we think, is an excellent player. Uh, he's a two-year starter. He's got 29 tackles, an interception, a forced fumble. Uh, the, the defensive end, Carter, at one point last year, I think he led the country in sacks. Uh, he's 6'7 and uh, 260 pounds and very athletic. And they're extremely aggressive on special teams. Uh, you know, last year they faked a field goal. They tried an onside, a surprise onside kick. They do that type of stuff all the time. And they're very aggressive with their punt block team. Uh, they've, they blocked more punts than any team in the country in 2000 and 20 and 21 combined. I think they have seven blocks. And every time we play these guys, it, it, is, um, it is a battle. And, and so we, we have a, a really important week of prep. Uh, the other years that we've played these guys, we've had an extra week to prepare for them. Uh, and this week, it, it's one week. And this is a, a really hard offense to prepare for. They're much more multiple on defense than they've been. And, and we expect a, a really good, hard-fought football game that we're going to have to play extremely well. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. The nature of their offense is they stress every single part of your defense. You know, up front, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the midline, the veer, all the different traps they run. Um, I mean, when you're the defensive lineman, your head's just on a swivel because you don't know where it's coming from. And, you know, you get the, the belly G and the guard pulls and you got to get outside. And the next time you work outside, there's a guy trapping you. And, uh, you know, they, all the misdirection they have. If you're the linebackers, uh, you know, the guards at times lie to you. The linemen at times lie to you. The quarterback lies to you. The fullback lies to you. Uh, Jeff has been in this offense for over 30 years. You know, when I worked with him at Buffalo, uh, we ran a trap option offense, and he had worked with Paul Johnson all the way back to Hawaii in the 80s. And so this whole Paul Johnson system, um, Jeff has probably uh, mastered it as, as well as anybody. And, you know, in the secondary, the, all the different motions with the slots, you know, the quarterbacks, the starting quarterbacks completed two balls for 130 yards. And then, you know, the, the backup quarterback, 18, who's played, he's thrown the ball a little bit more, but they're throwing the ball better than they have in the past. And last year, I mean, they killed us with the pass. First play of the game, they run a, a naked boot, and they hit like a 50-yard play. Um, you know, they ran a, a rail route in the fourth quarter that 21 was wide open right down the hash. Uh, they won some one-on-one -on -one balls against a, a really good corner of ours who's now in the NFL. Uh, I mean, it, this is, you know, coaches always make a big deal of it. This offense is a nightmare to prepare for. It really is. It's a challenge, and, you know, part of having success against it is you have to embrace it. I don't know if we embraced it a year ago. You know, and I was just going to say, I mean, just thank God we operated the way we did on offense a year ago, or it would have been a blowout. It would have been a blowout. What is your assessment of your defense through five games? I think we're improving. I think we're better. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're fixing problems. You know, against Clemson, we were awful on third down, and we went back and looked at what we did, and no, we had to make some change-ups, and, and we did it. And we were much better defense on third down against Florida State. Uh, I still think we can become more consistent. Uh, you know, I think we still have to do a much better job of playing deep balls. It just seems like every time there's a deep ball, uh, you know, we, we start grabbing when we don't need to. You know, some of our pass interferences, we're in great shape. 
uh, you know, Gavin on the one had the guy covered. Go pick the football. Uh, you know, those are still things that we need to get better at, and we're working on it. And it got better from Clemson to Florida State. Uh, but I think overall the, the arrow's up, but we got a lot of football to go. It's, it's been good, and part of the reason it's been so good is how versatile Malik is. He's been effective as a blitzer. Uh, there's a few times against Florida State that we used him as a spy, that we tried to flush the quarterback in a direction, and sometimes in a direction away from where he wanted to throw the ball, and Malik's reaction time of, of getting there and disrupting throws. You know, sometimes you don't sack the guy, but Malik was there so quickly, and his hand is up, and you know, you're changing arm angles and ball trajectory and, and all those things sometimes are the difference between a, a first down completion and an incompletion. So it's been a good package. Uh, it was better against Florida State than it was Clemson. Um, but, I mean, I would say this. I think the reason it was better against Florida State is I think our defensive line rushed the passer so much better against Florida State than we did against Clemson. Uh, we, we got no pressure on on Clemson at all, and we never got DJ off his spot. And I thought we did a much better job on Saturday of getting Travis off his spot. You know, we we got some good pressure on him early. Um, he, he was having a hard time being able to set his feet. And I thought Rondell and Jasheen and some of those guys, it didn't show up in the stat sheet but they were extremely disruptive. And a lot of those third down stops on three man rushes is because they got the quarterback to move and which is half the battle. I don't view it that way. Like I, I really, they all count as one, you know. And I, I know it's again the conference is super important, and we want to win the conference, but we want to win every game, you know. We want to be nationally ranked. We want to have double-digit wins. We want to go to uh, a New Year's Six bowl game. Those are all goals of ours, and every single game plays into all of those goals, other than getting to the ACC championship game. You know, so you start out a season, you have a list of all these different things you want to accomplish. Um, and for a lot of those goals, uh, other than one of them, you know, the, the Vanderbilts and the Liberties and the Armies are all very important football games. So we don't, you know, come in here uh, before a game and say, hey, guys, this is a non-conference game. It's not as big a deal. But we only get 12 of them. And they're all really important. Well, I mean, you know, if you look at uh, this year, I mean, I, I would always love to play our four non-conference games first and then, you know, but it doesn't always work out that way. And, uh, you know, a team like, it, you know, worked out pretty well that, that, you know, we're halfway through the season and we'll be done with the non-conference schedule. You know, now getting Clemson and Florida State back to back early in the year. Um, you know, I always appreciate the, the ACC schedulers when they do that. Um, but, you know, you got to play the game sometimes. And, you know, for them to think that Wake Forest is the one team that can handle that in September and October, we'll take that as a compliment. They've, they've been very strategic with it. Uh, you know, they're, they're still cutting. Their, their aiming point on their blocks is a little bit more at the waist than the thigh board. And if you watch it, you can tell how actively they've coached it. So they're still getting people on the ground. Uh, you know, the difference is the perimeter blocks. You know, a lot of times those slots would arc and cut your safeties and your corners. Um, but what they've done is they've had like a lot more reduced sets that they just collapse the whole edge. So they're finding different ways of getting to the edge. And it's like any rule change. Uh, good coaches adapt, and Jeff's a good coach. They've adapted. They're, they're still getting the ball on the edge. 
they have found a different way to do it. Blake, uh, Blake will play. Um, right now, Cam won't. And we think we'll get Cam back after the bye week. How important is, um, you know, the, the, sorry, the backups, like just this week, the scout team, in preparing for a team like that? It is so important. It's the ch biggest challenge of defending uh, any triple option team when you don't run that is just the blocking's different. Uh, the timing of the fullback, the quarterback, the pitchback, all those relationships are, are really hard to duplicate. Uh, now, we've, we've been, we worked against Army in the spring. We worked against Army in fall camp. The scout team has been practicing it every other Sunday since we started the season. Um, and, and they're doing a good job, but it's never the same as when you face it in the game. But that is one of the most important parts of any preparation for a triple option offense is, is trying to mimic the looks with your scout, knowing that even if they do a great job, it's not going to be the same as what we're going to see on Saturday. Dave, how fun is it to see those wide receivers compete against each other day in practice? Because you have so many good ones. Is that one of the things you maybe take a look at and say that's pretty cool? You just you go into every game knowing that you have guys out there that can make plays. And every week, it seems like it's a different guy. Uh, I told a Torian that we play Florida State again this week. He, he gets up for that game. And I, I said, AT, I go, you know we play Florida State again this week. And he looked at me. And I'm like, whatever it is that week, like you are so locked in, you're so focused, you catch everything. And he's like, well, coach, out of high school, that was my dream school. And I'm like. You know, like when you get married someday, don't tell your wife that some other woman was your, your dream wife. Um, you know, don't tell, you, know, you can think that. Don't share that with the head coach. Um, so he just, that, that game two years in a row, he's played his best football. And, and he played outstanding and made so many critical catches. And, you know, the week before it was Jamal. And last week was AT, and, and what Keyshawn did was incredible. I mean, that one third down catch, I mean, I'm getting ready to call the defense up because I see the safety under the catch, and that was just an incredible uh, effort by him. That, that was a, a game-changing play, um, and, and Key's capable of doing that, and, and Taylor Marin can make plays like that. So we have... You know, the catch Don, Donovan Green made on the third down against the Blitz. I mean, I, you know, his arm was completely pinned. The DB completely grabbed his inside arm. And he made that one-handed catch, and Sam threw a perfect ball that only Donovan could catch. And, uh, I mean, I, I still get so excited when those guys make those plays, but they, they seem to make plays like that every week. They're all really important, Connor. The, the nature of what we do on offense really is not that much different than what Army does, right? When Army runs their triple, they don't know if the fullback, quarterback, or pitch guy can end up with it. And when we start that slow mesh, we don't know if we're going to hand it. And we can throw it to any one of those four guys. And you're always trying to find the one-on-one -on -one and who has the single coverage. And so the more that we're able to hit Donnie and AT and Jamal on the outside. And the more that those guys get safety over top coverages, the more it's going to open up the middle for Key and Taylor. And so a lot of times in our seasons, right, you know, Ja'Cory would have a really good game and the next game he'd be quiet, but then AT would have a big game. And, and that's all part of the design, that we go into games and let's see what they're going to do. And you can't double everybody and outnumber the run. So there, there's always going to be uh, either a numbers advantage or a matchup. And then what's critical is your ability, if you find the matchup in the one-on-one, -on -one, you got to win it. And, and that's where our improvement at receiver over the years has allowed us to be an effective audience or offense. Because it's one thing to find the one-on-one, -on -one, but if you can't win the one-on-one, -on -one, you're going you're to you're lose the game there. 
and we can win one-on-ones on the outside or at the slot. They are, and I think part of it is just the, the D line. Um, I mean, we're we're better on the D line. We've got depth. You know, we're, we're playing nine guys every game. You know, we're playing four tackles consistently. Uh, you know, Tyler and Dion start, but Kobe's playing just as much as those guys. And Kevin Pointer, we have a lot of uh, trust and confidence in him. And then at, at defensive end, you know, Jacory and Rondell start, but. Jasheen and Kendron play a lot of football, and Bernard Gooden plays a lot too. And so we're playing nine defensive linemen. We're rolling them all in there. It keeps guys fresh. It keeps guys healthy. And I think that's one of the biggest differences on defense is that we do have that depth on the D-line. And when you can constantly be rolling guys in there who are fresh, you can be a lot more disruptive. And we're going to have to do that this week as well. They are. Uh, I mean, Dylan has really improved, and, and Jalen, you know, didn't play as much as we wanted to get him in there. But when he got in there, he forced the fumble. And Jalen is so valuable to us on special teams. And he's, you know, starts on I think just about every unit. Um, and, and Ryan Smenda probably had hit, had one of his best games of the year. He really had a great game. So, uh, you know, our goal at linebacker has always been to have a pair and a spare. And now we have a pair and a pair. And Quincy Bryan is also getting better. So we might have a pair, a pair, and a spare. And that allows us to keep people healthy. That has always been our biggest challenge here, is we've had a lot of years that we got off to a, a fast start. And then we, we've kind of petered down the end because we didn't have the depth. And, and right now, my biggest goal is we, we have depth, and we just got to keep that depth. And, and that's going to be the key for us heading down the stretch. Oh, twice. twice. Yeah, That's yeah. It was. Um, you know, uh, part of the problem is, you know, if he kicks the ball a little deeper into the corner, the ball never gets out. So it's, you know, good news, bad news. You know, but I just thought him that tackle is, he, you know, the, the play in the bowl game. And I just, like, thank God he got up and he was okay. All right, thank you. Yeah.